Hey guys, welcome back, and we had a massive trade today in the NFL. As you can see on the draft board, the Carolina Panthers hold the number one pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. This is going to be insane. It shakes up this draft order entirely. But before I get into my new updated mock draft, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, leave a comment, and let me know who do you think the Panthers are going to select with the number one overall pick. Let's go ahead and get into it. We've got a ton of videos planned. I got a lot to do this weekend, so on that grind, but let's get into it with this first pick. The Carolina Panthers here hold the number one pick, and they're looking quarterback. Um, you could go Bryce Young. You could go with C.J. Stroud. Anthony Richardson has flown up on this database. I am going to take C.J. Stroud. He seems like the guy who is right now heavily in rumors to Carolina. I think he really fits their offense. More of a kind of guy that I think Frank Reich wants to coach. I think he makes a ton of sense for Carolina. Now they do need to add some weapons, but they've got a ton of money in free agency. There are rumors they might trade back again. I'm not really sure who would be willing to do that. But Carolina selects C.J. Stroud, number one. At number two, Houston Texans get Bryce Young. I think Bryce Young and Houston makes a ton of sense. They're a team that is looking to revamp that lineup. They've got a starting left tackle. John Mechie, who we played with in college, and a new head coach. Draft your quarterback of the future there. Bryce Young at number two. Love that for them. And at number three, it's going to be Will Anderson from Alabama. Arizona needs some pass rush. Zach Allen's a free agent. J.J. Watt just retired. They need to upgrade their defensive line. And Will Anderson Jr. is one of the best defensive prospects we've seen in quite some time. Now, there's rumors that Arizona might be looking to trade out this pick. The only team I really think that would maybe trade up are the Raiders. Maybe you could see a team like the Titans or the Commanders sneak in here. But I think they're going to stay put here. I'm going to have them select Will Anderson. Which leads us to my Colts here. They're looking for a quarterback. Newly hired head coach Shane Steichen helped in the development of Jalen Hurts as he had one of the best quarterback seasons of his career. Obviously, he had a career year. They're looking for a quarterback. And the guy that I like here is going to be Anthony Richardson. Now, what this means for the other quarterbacks on the roster, I don't know. Because I think Anthony Richardson is going to take some time to develop. I think most people are in agreement. Anthony Richardson needs a year or two to develop. Anthony Richardson in Indianapolis makes a lot of sense. The RPOs with him and Taylor, he's got an incredible arm. I like his fit here to Indianapolis. I'm going to select him here at four. However, I do think he's going to take a little bit of time. For the uh, Seahawks here at five, very interesting you could go with a Jalen Carter. You could go with a Tyree Wilson. I am going to go with Jalen Carter, though. I think that the talent is too good. You need help on your defensive line. It looks like he's not going to be in a ton of legal trouble here. I don't think Carter's going to get out of the top five. I've got Jalen Carter going to Seattle, really helping beef up that defensive line that desperately needs it. Jalen Carter is still my number one player in this entire draft. And um, for him to fall at five is really great value for the Seahawks. I think it makes a ton of sense. I like his fit there. At number six, we've got the Detroit Lions. I'm going to go, I usually go corner here. Do I want to shake things up? Um, yeah, let's shake it up a little bit. Let's go with Tyree Wilson here. Tyree Wilson's a really good run defender. And I think one of the biggest areas of concern last year around the Lions was their run defense. They couldn't stop anyone on the ground. Tyree Wilson could be great off the edge, but also could be a really good defensive lineman against the run, both of which are needs for the Lions. In a really deep cornerback class, they could go get that down the board. I like Tyree Wilson's fit quite a bit here to the Lions. At number seven, this is going to be a quarterback here, and I'm going to take Will Levis. Whether they get a quarterback in free agency, I know they are linked to Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference for me. I think Levis still will be the pick for the Raiders because if you get a quarterback, you're getting a guy that can be a bridge guy. Will Levis, sit him for a year or two. I think he has franchise quarterback ability. Got a good arm. He's mobile. Good quarterback. Has some question marks around his accuracy, but I still think Levis is a good player. I think makes a ton of sense here at number seven for the Raiders. At number eight, we got the Atlanta Falcons, and I'm not changing my pick at all. 
This is going to be Lucas Van Ness out of Iowa. I think this is a really good pick for them. They need help along their defensive line. They need dominant edge rushers. The power and speed of Lucas Van Ness, I think, is going to be key. Showed out at the combine. I really, really like his fit in Atlanta. He's going to be the pick here at eight. And then we get the Chicago Bears at nine. Where do they go? Well, the Bears have a ton of free agents. Wide receiver doesn't seem like a need for them anymore. I think they can kind of settle down on the wide receiver. Kalija Kansi is a name I did consider. I do really like his fit, but I don't know if I like it at nine. I got to take an offensive lineman here for Justin Fields. I'm going to take Paris Johnson. Now, I think he is the most polished offensive tackle prospect. You kind of know what you're going to get from him. Skaronsky, you don't know if he's going to translate well as a tackle or as a guard. Broderick Jones, a little bit more of a developmental guy, but is an incredible athlete. I still think he is going to be ultimately going to end up being the best tackle in this class. So go with the guy who's most polished that I think could start at your left tackle position immediately in Paris Johnson. Has experience. Justin Fields was, I believe, the quarterback his freshman year. I like the pickup here for the Bears. Then we move on to the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going to take Miles Murphy here out of Clemson. Really like this kid. I think he is going to be a really good player. And he's kind of fallen down the boards. There were times where he was in my top five. Getting him at 10 is good value. I know they're going to bring back Brandon Graham on a one-year deal, but they need some depth there on the defensive side of the ball, especially on the edge. You got Robert Quinn, I believe, one year. Brandon Graham, one year. You're going to need to address this down the line. Go get a guy in Miles Murphy who's got high upside, really good character, would fit in Philadelphia well, and is a position of need. And a good cornerback class, I think you can wait a little bit. I'm going to take Miles Murphy here. Then we're going to take Broderick Jones to the Titans. This has been the pick forever. I don't think this is changing. I think Broderick Jones makes way too much sense here. A uh, powerful offensive lineman, great athlete, good speed. Not that speed necessarily matters for an offensive tackle, but I just really like what Broderick Jones would bring, that tough, gritty mentality to the Tennessee Titans. I don't know what's going to happen with Derrick Henry, but we know the way Mike Vrabel likes to coach. Broderick Jones is the kind of guy I think he wants to have on his roster. At number 12, we got the Houston Texans, and this is where I'm going to take Peter Skaronsky. The Jets are going to miss out on all three offensive tackles, which is wild. Ultimately, when it's all said and done, I'm not even sure they're going to be at 13. But Skaronsky, I'm going to play him at guard. you got Laramie Tunsil, but I still think you need to be able to protect your quarterback. I like Skaronsky here quite a bit. And I think he makes way too much sense because Kenyon Green did not have a great rookie season. You could use some depth on that offensive line. Skaronsky, one of the best offensive tackle prospects. Give me Skaronsky at 12. The Jets at 13, we are still mocking as if they still have the pick. Osiris Torrance is fantastic, but I'm going to go with Dewand Jones out of Ohio State. This guy has been phenomenal, flying up draft boards. And the way he tested out at the combine, I think he ultimately will end up being a first-round pick. 13, really good value for Dewan Jones. I think it makes a ton of sense. Give me Jones here at 13. At 14, we've got the New England Patriots. This is going to be a corner here. Pick your guy. You've got all your choices here. I think Christian Gonzalez is CB1 right now. Great size. He's a physical corner, great tackler, but he just fits what New England needs to do on the defensive side of the ball, especially if Jonathan Jones doesn't come back in free agency. I think Gonzalez makes a ton of sense there, so he's going to be the selection. At 15, we are going to take Nolan Smith, edge out of Georgia, a guy that I really like. Um, Obviously, he had the injury concerns. He's more of a speed rusher, but... Really good player. They need help on the defensive line. Teaming him back up with Quay Walker, his college teammate, would be great. Like his fit a lot. Give me Nolan Smith there. At number 16, I'm taking Devon Witherspoon. The commanders need help in their secondary badly. Devon Witherspoon, obviously, he's very close with Christian Gonzalez to me. Loves to tackle, an incredible tackler. Really good in man-to-man. He's physical. He is a little bit undersized, though, which is a bit of a concern. And he doesn't have that top-end speed that you look for. But I really, really like Devon Witherspoon. I think he's going to be a fantastic player. I think what he's going to be able to bring to this team is really good. Commanders need secondary help. I'm going to take him here at 16. At 17, 
we've got the Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, I, I find it really hard to be able to pass on some of this offensive tackle. I've seen Darnell Wright here, Anton Harrison. They need corner, though. I am going to take Joey Porter. Keep the bloodline there. His father obviously played with them. Keep that intact. And look, they need cornerback help. They just cut William Jackson the third. I think he makes a lot of sense here. They need a corner, obviously. You've got the connections there with his father. You need some. I think you take Joey Porter. Simple as that. Which puts the Lions in a tough spot. In a deep cornerback class, I'm actually going to take Brian Branch. I've seen this one mocked a little bit. If he's on the board, I think this makes a lot of sense. Can play nickel corner, can play safety, both of which are positions of need for the Lions. You got Tyree Wilson first. You've got another decent corner. He could play corner for you in some packages. I think it makes way too much sense. They need help in the secondary. Brian Branch brings a ton of it. Uh, At number 19 for the Buccaneers, there's a number of ways you can go with this, but I'm going to go with best player available here, and I'm going to take Bajon Robinson. They need a running game. Rashad White is not the long-term answer. Trust me. Um, He showed flashes, but I don't think he's a three-down, every-down back. Bajon Robinson, one of the best running back prospects we've seen in years. Tampa, I don't know how much they're even going to be able to throw the ball, no matter who's playing quarterback. you got to be able to have an effective run game. Bajon Robinson gives you the opportunity to do that. For the Seahawks at number 20, you took Jalen Carter in the first round. Now I'm going to address wide receiver. I'm going to take Jackson Smith and Jigba. I think he has proven himself to be a legit wide receiver one in contention. I think he makes a ton of sense here. To play in the slot alongside Lockett and Metcalf, a position that they really need to address. I like Jackson Smith and Jigba. Had he stayed healthy all year, I think he would be wide receiver one. But ultimately, he is going to go here to the Seahawks. And then this is going to be a bit of a trend in wide receivers. We're going to see Jordan Addison come off the board of the Chargers. This is one of my favorite picks to make in every single mock because I think Jordan Addison is the perfect fit for the Chargers. A guy you can put in the slot, a quicker receiver, like his ability quite a bit here alongside Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Josh Palmer. Add Jordan Addison in there as a guy, get the ball in open field. I've seen Jay Flowers mocked here as well. I don't hate that one. I think he makes sense here. At number 23, this is where I'm going to take Quentin Johnston. I think you just need a big receiver on this team. I like Bateman. I like Duvernay. I think Duvernay is more of a specialist. Quentin Johnston is a really, really good player. I think he's going to bring a lot to this team. You need receiver no matter who's playing quarterback. I'm going to take him here. At number 24, the Minnesota Vikings take Deontay Banks, one of the easiest picks of this entire mock, because they need help in that secondary really bad. And they cut Cam Dantzler today. Was a bit surprised by that. I think this is a good selection for them, one that they need to address, a position of need, and a really good player. That's going to be the selection here. I saw Cyrus Torrance mocked here earlier, and I do like that. There's a number of ways they can go. I think I'm going to go with Darnell right here. I haven't done this one yet, but I think I'm not sure what's going to happen with Juwan Taylor and free agency. Jacksonville could use this pick to upgrade the players around Trevor Lawrence. You've got to be able to protect your franchise guy. Trevor Lawrence is important to this team, so I'm going to take Darnell right here, try and keep my quarterback protected. The Giants here at 26, a number of ways they can go again, but I'm going to go with Zay Flowers, a speedy receiver out of Boston College in a position they desperately need to address. They need that receiver position. Pairing him with Wandale Robinson, two guys that are electric in the open field, would be massive. There are a bit of size concerns and drop concerns with Zay Flowers, but overall, I think this guy is a very good prospect. It will be a first-round pick, and I think he makes a lot of sense to the Giants at 26. At 27, we've got the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to go with Drew Sanders, I think. No, I'm not going to go with Drew Sanders, actually. I feel like I'm going to go with Kaylee Ringo. Yeah, that is going to be the selection here for me. I just think Dan Quinn loves his big physical corners. Kaylee Ringo obviously has some question marks, but I really think he is going to be a fantastic player at the next level. It makes a lot of sense for what Dallas wants to do defensively. Bigger corner, pair him on the opposite side of Diggs. 
you're going to be able to lock some guys down. Ringo obviously struggled against Marvin Harrison Jr. Who didn't? Marvin Harrison Jr. had one of the greatest seasons of all time. I'm going to take him here at 27, which is the easiest pick of the draft. Osiris Torrance to the Bills would be a magic. It would be magical. This is what they need. They need a strong mauler on the interior of their offensive line. They do not have that. Their offensive line has been okay. Go back and watch the Bills video I uploaded this morning if you want more thoughts on this Bills offensive line. Josh Allen's mobility really minimizes just how weak this offensive line is. Osiris Torrance is one of my favorite prospects in this draft. If somehow he falls to 28, this is a no-brainer pick for Buffalo. Got to select him here. And then we've got the Cincinnati Bengals. This is an interesting one because I've got a few ways I could go with this. You could obviously go with an interior offensive lineman. I really like Steve Avila. I think he could sneak in around one. You could go with the tight end. Um, you could go with a running back. Jameer Gibbs is makes a lot more sense here than I think people want to give it credit for. And if Cam Smith is still on the board, I wouldn't hate that pick. But, you know, I am going to go with Darnell Washington. Yeah, I think he kind of fills two needs because he can – play as a bit more of an offensive lineman he's a really good blocker but he is a little bit more of a developmental guy uh in the receiving game he can catch passes that hasn't been his strength but I think Cincinnati could use him that way use him more as a blocker and in certain packages have him be a receiver fills two needs for the Bengals I think he makes the most sense here for the Saints here you got to go into your defensive line that's Kalijah Canty Kid had an awesome combine. He's been flying up draft boards. Super productive at Pitt, even though he has shorter arms. I think he makes loads of sense here. And that's going to be Cam Smith to the Eagles at 31. Darius Slay could be gone. James Bradbury could be gone. You need help in this secondary. Cam Smith, one of my favorite prospects in this entire class. I put him up there with Joey Porter and Devon Witherspoon. That kind of tier. I really like his ability. I think he's going to be a really good corner at the next level. South Carolina knows how to produce corners. I don't think Cam Smith is any different. The last pick of round one is the Kansas City Chiefs. And I'm going to select Keon White out of Georgia Tech. I think this guy has inside-outside versatility. Makes quite a bit of sense to what the Chiefs need on this defensive line. They could need another edge rusher to pair alongside Karloftis. You got Karloftis and Keon White. I think... Keon White or Adi Tamiwa Adebaware will slide into round one. Stay tuned next week. I will have player profiles on both of those guys. But guys, let me know what you guys think of this mock draft. Who do you guys think is going to be the number one overall pick? Now that Carolina Panthers hold it, will they trade back again? Let me know down below. That's going to do it for me. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. Stay tuned. My offseason preview series will be wrapping up on Sunday. We will be having my playoff or excuse me, my free agency predictions Monday and all sorts of videos planned for free agency, the draft, some big collabs coming. You don't want to miss it, but that's going to do it for me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.